Hello lovely viewers, you are most welcome to our channel Poetry Online. In this video, we shall be discussing the now freeze and close. Kindly subscribe to our channel and press the bell icon to get updates on all our new videos. Once again, let us assure you of a very interesting discussion. Get ready for this lesson. Let's start our discussion with a revision of previous knowledge. What is a noun? Explain the following terms. 1. Subject of a sentence. 2. Object of a sentence. Nouns are words that indicate a person, place or thing. In a sentence, nouns can function as a subject or the object of a verb or preposition. Nouns can also follow linking verbs to rename or re-identify the subject of a sentence or clause. These are known as predicate nouns. What then is the subject? The subject in a sentence or clause is the person doing, performing, or controlling the action of the verb. For example, the dog chases its tail. The noun dog as performing the action of the verb chase. Mary reads a book every week. The proper noun Mary as performing the action of the verb read. Object. What then is the object of a sentence? When it comes to objects, we have direct and indirect objects. Direct object receive the actions of the verb in a sentence or clause. For example, the dog chases its tail. The noun tail is receiving the action of the verb chase. Example two, Mary reads a book every week. The noun book is receiving the action of the verb read. Therefore, the book is the indirect object. So, we're now going to move to what a noun phrase and clause are. By the end of this lesson, you'll be able to 1. Explain the noun phrase. 2. Identify the noun phrase and give its grammatical functions. What is a phrase? What are the elements of a phrase? Before we answer these questions, let us examine the following. In the room. Example two, at home. Example three, over the bar. Example four, the green ball. Example five, the soldiers. Example 6. Through the window. Examine these examples carefully as we are going to use them to generate the meaning of a phrase. What have you noticed about them? 1. They are all a group of words. These words are related. That is, they are well arranged. For example, in example one, we have in the room. These are group of words that are related and well arranged. We cannot have room in there or there in room. At home. At home, group of words which are related. We cannot have home at. Over the bar. These are group of words that are related and well arranged. We cannot have the over bar or bar the over. Two. This group of words have no finite verb. A finite verb shows the time either present or past, that an action takes place. 
For example, he ate the food. The finite verb here is ate. The phrase in this sentence is the food. However, the phrase does not have a finite verb. The food. The third observation is that this group of words have no subjects. What did we say a subject of a sentence is? The subject of a sentence or a clause is the person or thing doing, performing, or controlling the actions of the verb. Example 1. In the room. You may be tempted to ask the question, who is in the room? Example 2. At home. You may be tempted to ask, what is at home? Example 3. Over the bar. Here again, you may be tempted to ask, what went over the bar? Example 4. Through the window. One may be tempted to ask, what went through the window? The fourth observation is that this group of words do not express a complete thought. Thus, we do not understand them completely. For instance, in the room, you may be tempted to ask the following questions. What is in the room? Or who is in the room? So when we put all these four observations together, we can define a phrase as a group of related words without a finite verb and a subject and does not make a complete thought. A phrase can also be defined as a group of words which forms part of a given sentence containing neither a subject nor a verb. Phrases, therefore, do not make up a complete sentence since they have no complete meaning of their own but are dependent on the rest of the sentence to express a meaningful thought or idea. Here is a simple trick you can use to determine the type of phrase that has been underlined. We can determine the type of phrase by identifying the word class of the head word of a sentence. Let's consider the following examples. Example 1. Students. Example 2. The men with children. Example 3. Women in the cities. Example 4. A fat goat. So can we say that the head words are nouns? What makes them noun phrases? First, they are either a word or group of related words. They have no finite verb. They do not make a complete thought and their head words are nouns. One thing you have to know is that there are no fixed position for the head word. In some phrases, there is only the head word, as in the first example, students. In others, there are words before the head words, as in the men with children and a fat goat. One. The head word here is students. Example 2. The men with children. The head word of this expression is men. Example 3. Women in the cities. The head word in this expression is women. Example 4. A fat goat. The head word in this expression is goat. Therefore, we can say that these are now phrases. Why do we say so? They are either a word or a group of related words. They have no finite verb. They do not make a complete meaning. Their head words are all nouns. Why do we say they are now phrases? Let's find out. A now phrase can therefore be said to be any phrase that wears the emblem of a noun or functions 
as a noun in the context it is used. Any phrase that begins with either an article, an adjective, or a pronoun is a noun phrase. Some noun phrases begin with determinants, such as a, an, his, hers, those, their, they, my, yours, these, that, etc. A determinant is a word that usually precedes a noun. Let's consider these examples. Example 1. The fat goat. This expression begins with a definite article, de. Example 2. The radio set. This expression begins with the adjective dear. Example 3. A slim girl. This expression begins with the indefinite article a. Example 4. Promotion interview. This expression begins with the noun promotion. In modern grammar, a word can be a phrase. Example, students, soldiers, men, etc. We can determine the type of phrase by pointing out the word that can replace the underlined words. If, for example, the word that can replace the phrase is a noun, then the phrase is a noun phrase. Let's consider this example. Nani is a goat. He fights with everyone. What we have to do right now is to find a word or phrase which can replace goat in the sentence. Nani is a goat. The underlined expression is a goat. Let's try the word stubborn. Nani is a stubborn. He fights with everyone. This sentence is grammatically wrong because a goat is a noun and stubborn is an adjective. What this simply means is that we identify the word class of the underlined word and replace it with a word from that word class. Let's now replace it with the noun boy. Nani is a goat. He fights with everyone. Let's remove the expression a goat and replace it with a boy. Nani is a boy. He fights with everyone. This is correct. Hence, the underlying expression is a noun phrase. This method demands that you remove the underlined word and put in another word from that word class to determine the type of phrase it is. In doing this, candidates are not expected to write the words they have replaced in their answers. It is only there as a guide to help them know the type of phrase it is. Let's now move to the functions of a noun phrase. A noun phrase can function as a subject, subject complement, object, object complement, and a position. 1. A noun phrase can function as a subject. 1. A noun phrase can function as a subject. What then is the subject of a sentence? As we said earlier, the subject of a sentence it's a word or group of words which shows the doer or the performer in a sentence. If a person or an animal or a thing does something in a sentence, then that person or thing or animal is the subject of the sentence. Another way we can find out the subject of a sentence is by asking ourselves who or what is performing the action. The answer to this question will give us the subject of the sentence. Always remember that 
the subject comes before a finite verb and cannot be omitted. Again, the subject comes before a finite verb and cannot be omitted. Let's consider the following examples. Example 1. Tenwa Achebe wrote no longer at ease. To determine the subject of this sentence, let's ask ourselves who or what performed the action in the sentence. Who wrote no longer at ease? The answer is Chenwa Achebe. So, Chenwa Achebe is the subject of this sentence. And we said the subject cannot be omitted. So, taking out Chenwa Achebe will mean that we will have wrote no longer at ease. This sentence sounds illogical. Therefore, the subject is a vital part of a sentence. Example 2. The cats killed the mouse. Who killed the mouse? The cats. Example 3. They stay in this house. Who stays in this house? D. Example 4. A good student behaves well always. The underlined expression is a good student. The grammatical name is a noun phrase. Why do we say it is a noun phrase? The head word is a noun. Student is a noun. It begins with an indefinite article A. What is a function? In this case, a good student is a subject. 2. Noun phrases can function as an object of a sentence. A noun phrase can function as a direct object or indirect object. A direct object is the thing or person affected by the actions of the verb. It comes immediately after the transitive verb. Example 1. Paul scored the goal. Example 2. His mother has paid the school fees. Example 3. The boys plucked the ripe mangoes. Example 4. The demonstrators broke the pieces of furniture. Example 5. My sister sells bread. As we said earlier, the direct object comes immediately after the transitive verb. Let's look out for the transitive verb in this sentences. The transitive verbs are scored, has paid, plucked, broke, sells. Always remember that the noun phrase comes immediately after the transitive verb in the sentence. For instance, in example one, Paul scored the goal. The noun phrase comes immediately after the transitive verb, scored. So the noun phrase is the goal. Example two, the noun phrase comes immediately after the transitive verb has paid. The school fees is a noun phrase. Example 3. The noun phrase is the ripe mangoes. Example 4. The noun phrase is the pieces of furniture. Another way of finding the direct object in a sentence is to find out the answer to this question. Who has been? Then you add a transitive verb, or what has been, then you add a transitive verb. Example, what has been scored? The answer is a goal. What has been paid? The response is the school fees. Now that we know how noun phrases function as a direct object, Let's consider how it functions as an indirect object. An indirect object 
refers to the person who benefits or gain from the actions expressed by the verb. Let's examine the following examples. Example 1. Richard gave his shirt to the students. In this sentence, we have two objects, thus, shirts, and students. However, the students gained or got the shirts, making students the indirect objects. Example 2. Fatih bought her father a bicycle. Who got the bicycle? The answer is her father. Therefore, her father is the indirect object. Example 3. The artist painted for his uncle a picture. Who got the picture? The answer is his uncle. 3. A noun phrase can function as a subject complement. Subject complements say something about the subject. They come after linking or equative verbs, such as is, am, um, are, was, were, be, been, become, look, feel etc. Let's consider the following examples. Example 1. Eventually, he became the pride and joy of his father. The pride and joy of his parents is underlined. Example 2. Our English teacher is a prolific writer. A prolific writer has been underlined. The underlined expressions are now phrases which functions as a subject complement. Who became the pride and joy of his parents? He. So the pride and joy of his parents says something about the person being talked about. In the second expression, who is a prolific writer? Our English teacher. So, a prolific writer says something about the subject of the sentence, which is our English teacher. A noun phrase can function as an object complement. Object complements say something about the object. Let's consider these examples. Example 1. The class made Harris their class perfect. The underlined expression is a noun phrase, which functions as an object complement. Always remember that object complement comes directly after the object it is talking about. Who was made the class perfect? Harris. Therefore, their class perfect as an object complement because Harris is the object in this sentence. Example 2. Many people consider this lady their role model. Their role model underlined. This is a noun phrase. What is its function? It is the object complement. Why do we say so? Many people consider this lady their role model. Who is considered as a role model? This lady. Therefore, this is an object complement because this lady is an object and their role model says something about the lady. Example 3. He pronounced the word correctly. The underlined expression here is the word. This is a noun phrase, which is an object complement. A noun phrase can function as a position. A position adds information to a noun head. Example, I love Ghana, our motherland. Example 2, Nana, the president of Ghana, 
as my role model. The underlying expressions are positive as they add more information to the noun head. Let's now consider some past questions and the noun phrases. Pollution has become a threat to our environment and the urban dwellers suffer most. The underlined expression here is a threat to our environment. This is a noun phrase. It is the complement of the verb phrase has become. The community center was brimful of expectant citizens when the chief came in. The underlined expression is the community center. This is a noun phrase. It is the subject of the verb was. Niger, for example, the absence of wetlands has forced men to break new grounds with a fish farming technique, which has proven very successful. The underlined expression is the absence of wetlands. This is a noun phrase. It is the subject of the verb has forced. The apparent loss of hope was quickly replaced by a more forceful passion. The underlined expression is the apparent loss of hope. This is a noun phrase. It is the subject of the verb was replaced. Ghana has become the tools of the world in recent time because of a conscious effort to promote peace and stability. The underlined expression is the tools of the world. This is a noun phrase. It is the complement of the verb has become. The leader of the gang, a mountain of a man, said fiercely that if Kosoko and Zolo played any tricks, they will have themselves to blame. The underlined expression is a mountain of a man. The underlined expression is a noun phrase. The repeated use of some drugs can produce a measure of pleasure. The underlined expression, a measure of pleasure, is a noun phrase. It is the object of the phrase can produce. A large number of people turn to libraries to satisfy a desire for knowledge. The underlined expression is a desire for knowledge. The grammatical name for this expression is a noun phrase. It functions as the object of the verb phrase to satisfy. Part of the prize was a return ticket. Part of the prize is a noun phrase. It is the subject of the verb was. Thanks for watching this video. Please don't forget to like, comment, subscribe and share this video.